Greetings RC Model Geeks and here we are in the shed yet again for part is it 19 of the DB Sport and Scale software pup electric build right it's been fairly busy today um, I've got the second half of the wing covered and uh, varnished as well So that's all nice, and that's pretty much sort of dried off. So that's looking good. Uh, I've also done the other aileron for that. It's uh, hanging up on the roof there at the moment, drying off. So that's good. Um, I probably have to wait till tomorrow before I can do the uh, the hinging um, on that aileron. Uh, what else has been done? Um, got the uh, horizontal stab and uh, the vertical fin there they're all done uh, that vertical fin is still uh, a bit sticky so he's just slotted in there drying off so that's good also um, yeah and I mean that's really um, all there is for today, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, there isn't there isn't a lot more to show for it. There's a lot of effort gone in, um, but yeah, not a lot to uh, to show. Um, yeah, what else is there? And uh, there's the uh, I finished um, having a go with the metal work around that. Uh, front section and that sort of looks okay I'm not 100% happy with it but it ain't bad um, I've got to do underneath there as well um, a metal coloured and also the centre section of the uh, of the wing there that is also uh, meant to be uh, silver, uh, so I've got to do that. Like I said, I'm just waiting for things to dry off, uh, really. Going back to this um, Dalmatian Lady glider, um, in anticipation of building that in the near future, um, I went and bought a, uh, a second-hand uh, Cox uh, 0.049 uh, motor second hand off eBay um, so yes that's, uh, that'll be coming soon and we can have a little play with that it's the one with a tank on the back as well so it'll make a nice compact um, um, power pod whether or not it works or not is another matter it was only a tenner <coughs> so um yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But if you've got any old um, Cox uh, 049 uh, parts knocking around, um, feel free to send them my way. Um, yeah, uh, always handy to uh, have a few bits because I've got a feeling we'll end up rebuilding this one. And um, I know Hobby King was selling the, uh, the Cox engines out of China, um, but they don't have those in stock anymore. So uh, that source of uh, uh, of cheap ones has dried up. But uh, yeah, if you've got an old Cox um, uh, glow plug uh, head, for example, um, yeah, if you want to chuck it this way, that'd be great. Um, right, the old plane is coming along, starting to look like something now, which is uh, very good. I'm just waiting for the swallow to turn up. He's, uh, <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's, he's crashed his mini super, um, so he's down to no planes now. <laughs> uh, he's basically written off the fuselage, I believe. Landing again. He's just got to learn how to land. He just can't land a plane. Anyway, um, right. So. This lower wing, uh, as you saw, is pretty much finished. Uh, there's the underneath, silver there. 
Um, it needs this final aileron um, finishing. So I thought I'd show um, how I did the hinging on that. So um, I'll be back with you when I've uh, started to do it. Okay, so I've got the aileron here and I've put three marks, one there, see if it will show up, maybe not, one there and there's one in the middle and one at the end. There you go. Right, now what we're going to do, we need to get a, a hole, or three holes, right on the corner of that aileron and we're going to sort of do them at uh, 45 degrees. Um, now to do that, I'm going to use a soldering iron. I'm going to use a pointy tip soldering iron and I'm going to burn the hole, basically. Um, I found that's the easiest way to do it. Um, it's much more accurate than trying to drill something like this. Uh, drilling it would just be a nightmare. And, um, and using the soldering iron gives you a nice round hole and it also burns the edges of the, uh, the covering as well. It makes it look quite nice. So, I'm going to get the old soldering iron out and, uh, and make the first hole. Right, we're on coffee cup cam at the moment. Um, so I can show you how I'm going to do these three holes. Here, here and here in the aileron. So, I've got my soldering iron and I'm just going to line the tip, it's a pointy tip on this soldering iron, it's not a flat tip, and we're just going to line it up right with the corner, there like that, and you can see it just started to burn a hole. So we're going to try and go in at sort of 45 degrees. There we go, it's burning in. And there it is. One hole. Right on the corner. As long as it doesn't catch fire and then we do the same thing again right there and the good thing about this is it's really accurate you don't get that wobbling around like you do with a drill we're going in There you go, there's two. Still smoking a little bit. Whoops, look. And then same again on the third one. And get it right on the corner, go in at an angle. Just like that. And it's that easy to do. That easy. Oops. Yeah, she's having a good old chooch there. And that is it. <coughs> and then you can get your. Um, your hinges. and shove them in and they'll be sitting in there like that at 45 degrees they need to go in a little bit more um, what you can do now you've got your hole you can run a drill in and out of there if you want to just to open it up a little bit more if you need to see that one's a little bit tight but there you go she's in And that one's in there. You'll have to trim a little bit off if you're doing it on this because they're too long to 
to fit all the way in. So you probably need to trim 10 mil off them or something like that. Um, you know, like just chalk it with a uh, pair of scissors and push it in. It's that easy. And you do exactly the same on the uh, on the other half, on the wing half. And then you just epoxy them in. What I do when I'm epoxying um, these kind of hinges in, in fact any kind of hinge really, unless it's one of these like you know straight plastic uh, things that actually uses the um, the, the plastic as the uh, the moving hinge part, um, is I always put a dab of grease or something on that hinge joint there. So dab of grease, work it in nicely so it's right into the uh, the moving parts of the hinge before I epoxy it. Yeah, then just epoxy it in, boom, and it's um, it's done. Simple, isn't it? So there you go. Um, um, I'm probably not going to finish that today. We'll see. I've got some other things to do. Um, so yeah, so uh, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. I don't think there's anything else to show you at the moment. Um, yeah, I suppose I could show you the fuse. Um, I finished covering the uh, the front part there, the silver, all round there, um, and the underneath there. Um, yeah, that was that Obby King silver covering, which looks quite nice, really. Um, and I've also I varnished over this as well, just to take the shine off it slightly. Um, and I think that's come out uh, uh, quite nice. So uh, yes, so uh, like, comment, subscribe, and um, I'll probably see you all uh, tomorrow for the next exciting instalment. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody that's emailed me um, with uh, compliments and stuff. Um, you know, I'm just a bloke in a shed. Uh, sticking bits of wood together and you know you can do this anybody can do this you know there's no great skill or artistry or whatever involved in this stuff uh, it's just simple little steps of sticking stuff together um, you know and a little bit of thought and you can make something like this you know um, just don't rush it and it will come out perfect. Righty-ho, see you all tomorrow. Bye.